I said the royal law. law of love. We left off in the last session, just ran out of time in our class, for dealing with the love of God, which is the person of God, which we'll deal with now, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. We opened up the idea and the understanding that God, like all spiritual truths, there's a legal side and there's a vital side, yes, right? Yes, sir. So what we see here is there's the character side or the nature side of God, yes. right? Yes, sir. Who God is. Then there's the manifestation side, the action side, right? The, yes. the acts of God, what God does. So we found out and we, we, we approached the subject that God does what he does because of who he is. In fact, I'm going to say this this way. You can trust God, and I want you to write this one down because we're going to continue to build on this. You can, anyone can trust God because his motive toward them never changes. That's half of it. I'll say it again. Anyone can trust God because his motive toward them never changes. Therefore, his actions toward them will never change. Amen. You see that? Yeah. If what he does is because of who he is, then you can trust him. Because if what he is never changes then he'll never act differently towards you. That's how you can always come to him and know he's going to accept you. He doesn't change, right? He's no respecter of persons. Well, in fact, let's just deal with that. Why don't we deal with that? It is the love of God. Let's go to the book of James. And we're going to continue to build on this. Now, we were in 1 Corinthians as we closed the last class, and we'll pick up there. But look at what it says here once again about the royal law of love. James chapter 2, it says this. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. But if you have respect to persons, it says right there that God is no respecter of persons. Well, if you backed up, you can see what he's talking about, about the assembly, the church of the living God. Look at verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. I thought we were talking about love. <laughs> now he's talking about faith. Faith works by love. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So now we see then that God is no respecter of persons. His faith, the law of faith will work for everybody just the same. The law of love applies to everybody just the same. And therefore God... The cause and effect will stay the same, and we can expect the same results because he will act the same way toward us every time we receive and respond according to his love. He'll manifest the same way because of who he is. Amen. These laws won't change. Now, as we read on down, if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that wears the gay clothing, and say to him, sit here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou here, or sit under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves? Are you become judges of evil thoughts? So forth and so on. Now, he's talking on. He said, now, the point I'm trying to make is, your seat with God yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. is established because he loves you. Not because of what you have, possess, or what you do. Do you see that? Yes, sir. In fact, the very next verse says, those come in, they might be poor in this world, but they're rich in faith. So God evidently evaluates people by their faith level, not the cost of their designer clothes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, do you see this? Yes. You see what we're talking about now. So we can understand then this is who God is. God is no respecter of persons. Now, what that means is there will be, because he's no respecter of persons, no difference in his action towards someone. That means he wants everyone healed. Yes, yes sir, that's true. 
He wants everyone delivered. Yes, sir. He wants everyone saved. Yes, sir. He wants everyone forgiven. Yes, sir. He wants everyone whole and functional. Yes, sir. Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. So the actions, the manifestations of God, well, the best accurate description of his manifestations would be the gifts of the Spirit. That's why we'll come back to that. But here's the whole point that I'm making. Those manifestations come but from the Holy Spirit because they're motivated by the love of God. Right? We got far enough in the last class that we saw 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. So we can see love then becomes the motive that drives us to pursue, to push into, to operate in, to believe for the manifestations, the love acts of God. You know what? That just came up in my spirit. Why don't we just call for this particular session the gifts of the Spirit? Why don't we call them the love acts of God? Does that help you? I mean, when you're discouraged and weary and breathless and then he's got a prophecy to edify, exhort, and encourage. Somebody comes along right at the right time, and he, he prophesies to you or she, and under that anointing, it hits the mark, and all of a sudden, <gasps> your breath comes back in your lungs. You get a second wind. Wind hits your sails. I believe I can do this after all. Why? Because that prophecy came, it blew breath back into you. Amen. It's a love act. Can you see that? All right, now let's talk about why does God do that then. He does it because he loves. So the Holy Spirit then, the love of God, God is love, is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost then has two sides. Holy Spirit is God's own spirit. He's a person. So the Holy Spirit has a character, a nature, and he has a power side. He's the anointing, the power of God. He raised Jesus from the dead. So he's got the action manifestation side. Are you with me? Yes. Well, let's talk about then. We've talked a little bit, and we'll come back to it about the manifestation side of the Spirit because He loves. Let's talk about the character side. Amen? Amen? All right, let's go to Galatians chapter 5, and I want to connect this once again with the Holy Spirit as the source. So if you had a little chart and you put the word love and underneath it Holy Spirit because you can draw a little heart or whatever you want to, and then just did two arrows like this. On one side you could put character, and on the other side you could put manifestation. Right? What he is, what he does. And so it would help us to see that both are synchronistic. Both flow out of love. Amen. Amen. Now here, we're going to see the Holy Spirit is the author of this. And since he's the one that sheds the love of God brought in our heart, here's what happens. Verse 22, Galatians 5. But the fruit, now this is the character side. The fruit of the Spirit. Do you see this? Is. Now, it's very important because I want to teach you something. You may have heard this before as I've taught along if you've been in any of the church services or, or other classes. But uh, there's so many people that have never, ever heard this in their life. And many of you may all of a sudden, oh, yeah, that's right. Or maybe you've never heard it and you hear it for the first time. But notice this does not say the fruits, plural, are. If there were nine fruits, it would say the fruits are. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Just like in 1 Corinthians 12 on the manifestation side, now concerning spiritual, and the word gifts is in italics, but it's plural. It is a Greek word that's plural, spirituals. So spiritual manifestations. So now the manifestations are independent, driven by the same source, but they act differently. But the fruit is singular. So the character of God is one unit. His actions come all out from that one unit. Are you with me? So prophecy is an action of love. Tongues is an action of love. Healing is an action of love. But it's all because of one unit. Well, it's all proceeding from the same source. Are you with me? All right, well, we see the same thing here now because it's going to describe his character to us. 
If you were to go back and cross-reference them to 1 Corinthians 13 where it describes love's attributes, you're going to find love is kind. Love is patient. Isn't that what it says in 1 Corinthians 13? All right. So look what it says here. The fruit of the Spirit is what? See, there's but one fruit. Do you see that? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, love has joy. Love has peace. Think of 1 Corinthians 13. Love endures all things. Love is long-suffering. Love is patient. Love has long-suffering. Love has gentleness, goodness, faith. Huh? Right? Love believes all things. Love has faith. Can you see that? Yes. Meekness, temperance. So we see then there, and we'll look at these nine things, but what I want you to see is the best way I can describe it is love is a fruit. It's the character of God. It's like an apple. One fruit. Now, there are a lot of parts that make that fruit up. There's a stem. There's a core. There's seeds. There's a peel. There's meat. It's one apple but has all those components. So the fruit of the Spirit is love. You see that? But love has joy. Right? Love has peace. That's why it has self-control. It's not haughty. It's patient. That's why 1 Corinthians 13 describes it the way that 1 Corinthians 13 describes love because love is kind. Love is patient. Love seeks not its own. Love doesn't behave unwisely, unseemly. In other words, love has self-control. Love has long-suffering. Love is kind. Love is gentle. Love, can you see? Exactly parallel, side by side, in both scriptures, the same attributes. The thing is, love is all those things. There's one fruit, one character, one source of peace, one source of joy. One source of patience. One source of faith. One source of self-control. One source of gentleness. One source of kindness. One source of goodness. All of those things are who He is. Can you see that? He is good and always good. He is kind and always kind. He is patient and always patient. He believes the best in every person because he always believes. Amen. Can you see that? Yes, Which is why he'll never change his mind about you and me. He'll never change his mind about any gifts he gave. He won't take them back. Glory be to God. He is love. In every complete way that love can manifest, he is it. He's the all in all. And out of love came three worlds. Love created a planet called Earth. Love created thrones and dominions and angels and trees and rivers and gold and mountains. And Think about it. In the beginning, love created. Well, if love created the world in the beginning, the old world, if love was the motive to create what he created, then love has to be the motive to create the new creature. Do you see that? That's why I became a new creature, because he loved me. And I was lost and undone and going to hell, so he, he recreated. And restored me and forgave me and drew me out from under the dominion of a terrorist and delivered me from fear so that all my lifetime I'm not subject to bondage and gave me authority to live free from the one that wants to steal from me. Glory be to God. Can you see this? All right, now let's go further talking about who he is. Let's go to 1 John. Go back to verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. 
The Spirit of God is in you, actually. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist, where have you heard it should come, even now it's already in the world. You are of God. You are of God. Now hang on. Hang on. Let's look at a verse. Back up one chapter. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. See that? 1 John 4, 4. You are of God. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They that are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, the world hears them. We are of God. He that knoweth God hears us. He that is not of God doesn't hear us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. If it's not operating in that law, it did not originate from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, exactly right. That's right. Because his character is love. Yes. It's the only fruit he operates in. Yes. And that is the dividing line. Yes. That's the discerning spirit. Love works no ill to his neighbor. It fulfills all the law. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. There is no way the Holy Spirit will lead anyone to act contrary to God's love command. They cannot be violating the love command and be told by the Holy Spirit to do it. Yes, sir. Cannot be. That's right. It is the discerning tool. Yes. Amen. See that? Yes. It's dividing the spirits. Yes. Now let's read on. <laughs> Woo! Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God knows God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now look at this. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Woo! Because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So in here, herein, in here is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. Mm. And sent his son so that we might have access to the mercy seat. Now, I really, I want to read on down, but I don't have time. So let's just drop down. Now that we understand what's going on here, you can see the subject matter, correct? So let's drop down now to verse 16. And we have known and believe we have known. That's a revelation of the love causes us to believe that he'll do this for us. We have known. See, People don't have a faith problem. They have a revelation of the love of God problem. You get a revelation of how much God loves you, faith is easy. It's easy to believe anything. If he made me righteous, what else won't he do? Oh, glory be to God. So now, we're now, we're getting down to the power that's going to cast out the demons that are trying to keep our life in bondage. We're about to see the force gets cast out. Once we get a revelation of this, it is the power to cast out the devil that held us under the dominion of death. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! My, 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 my. And we have known and believed the love God has toward us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Here's another herein. It means in here, in this. In this is our love made perfect. Now, the old King James used to throw me on that one because I would always be, be, want to be walking in love, our love, develop my love. Well, you do have to develop the fruit of the Spirit and your own human spirit, but it's a revelation of love that causes the human spirit to be strengthened to come to excellence. We can't love to this degree. He's, we're going to see now what he's actually saying. In here or in this is our love made perfect. The word perfect means mature. Our revelation... What he's talking about is 
our revelation of how much God loves us coming to maturity. Me getting a mature revelation of how much God loves me. In this is love, and here's what the Greek reads. Now, I want you to look at your King James. Does anybody have a footnote by our love, the word our? In your, you have a King James Bible? What does yours say? What's the footnote? A foot, little footnote? Love with us. Now, that's what the Greek says. The Greek does not say our love. It's not your love, not my love. It says in here, in this, is love with us brought to maturity. He's talking about Jesus being there with us, manifesting himself to us. What, what he's calling now, he's calling love a person. He's about to say to us, love is with us at all times. Isn't, this isn't an abstract force that we're trying to do in ourselves. No, that's not what he's saying. He is saying, love, God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. In this is God who is love and love with us, personified, made or brought to completion, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because... As he is, as he is, now look, as he is, not as he was, not as he will be. Well, what's the subject matter? Love is with us. As he is, he's with me, he's here. What's he here to do? As he is. He came to make me like he is in this world because that's how much he loves me. Yeah, amen. Which means if he could walk on water when it required it, so can I. Amen. Which means if he lays hands on the sick and they recover, God will back me up too. That everything he stepped out to do, God loves me as much in this world as he loved Jesus when Jesus was in this world. Amen. And not as he was, as he is. Amen. Where is he? Seated at the right hand of the Father and dwelling in me. Yes. Where is he? Far above principality, power, might, and dominion in every name that is named. Where is he? Is he still suffering? Is he still tormented? No. Is he still dealing with human passions? No. Or can he help me when I'm tempted? Yes. Is he a faithful high priest yes. who loves me to intercede for me? Yes. And can I touch him with the feelings of my shortcomings? Yes. Can I go to him to find grace to help in a time of need? Yes. Is he ever available at the mention of his name by faith? Does he love me so much that I can come to him boldly as he is so are we in this world and what does it produce boldness now you need to go to this you need to know this boldness is a manifestation of a revelation of the love of God for me. <laughs> Can you see that? Boldness is a manifestation of the revelation of the love of God for me. I can be bold in any circumstance because I know given a judgment how it's going to turn out. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Why? Well, he goes on to tell us why. He said, there is no fear in love. Mature love casts out fear because fear has torment. Well, that tells you right there, God doesn't want you tormented. He is love. He can't change. And when he is in manifestation, torment leaves. So a revelation of the love of God for you will just destroy torment's hold on you. No one can stay tormented. When they get a revelation of how much God loves them. They'll rise up in boldness and break it off of them. Say, absolutely not. I'm God's child. I'm of God. I have overcome them. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. 
Woo, glory be to God. The Holy Spirit has shed about the love of God in my heart. I know who he is, therefore I know he will manifest himself for me. You see what's going on now? Oh, glory be to God. Keep on reading here. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not mature in love. We love him because he first loved us. How much does God love you? Oh, my, my, my. My, my, my. Well, he loved you so much that he just, uh, Hebrews 2 says he destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil, that they might be delivered from the fear of death, who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That means he loved me so much that he dealt with the very tormentor that would affect the rest of my life. The whole course of my life has changed because he loved me so much he broke the grip of satanic oppression. Not because I was strong enough to break it. I was without strength to break it. So in this was the love of God commanded toward me. This is what I want you to see. In this was love manifested that in due time when we couldn't help ourselves, Christ died for us. Now that leads us into the manifestation side. Now we see who he is. He cannot change. He will never change. And verse 19 we'll read before we go any further. It says this, we love him because he first loved us. So I want you to see this passage of scripture is not talking about our love. It's talking about a revelation of his love toward us. We have known, we have believed the love God has toward us. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Our love, our trust toward him is a response to a revelation of how much he loved us. Well, we couldn't even love him back. Are you ready to step into your destiny? Your life will be forever transformed as you grow in your relationship with God. Become established in strong faith grounded upon God's Word and become empowered to impact your world. If you're ready to answer the assignment of the Holy Spirit and become a world changer, come train with us. Often the first step on a new journey is the hardest, but we are here to help every step of the way. Apply today, either through the online application or by mail. Our core curriculum will begin with classes on righteousness, authority of the believer, and faith. Our instructors will impart biblical revelation knowledge and application, as well as practical ministry experience. Experience School of Him for yourself. You will never be the same.